Good evening, everybody, and I want to welcome you to tonight's Bible study. I want to thank you for joining me tonight, and uh, we're going to get into a great, great subject that the Lord put in my heart. Um, again, I say this on all my Wednesday night Bible teachings, is I can't wait for the day that we can open up again on Wednesday nights and fellowship and get into the Word of God. There's nothing like Wednesday nights. That's where the, the, the teachings are, are big. You get really in-depth into the Word of God. And um, here at Douglas First Assembly in Pastor Pete's class, uh, the adults really get into it. They ask questions there. there Pastor Pete loves to do pass out, uh, pass out sheets. And, um, and the questions are just in-depth. And it makes you think, makes you go home. And for me, it makes me go home and want to study the Word of God. Um, I really miss the youth class with uh, uh, teacher Marsha Jones, uh, along with the other teachers that... Uh, that we fellowshiped with here. This was a packed place on Wednesday night. And um, as soon as we open up, if you have never been to a Bible study here at Douglas First Assembly, I want to personally invite you to come check us out. Uh, we're a friendly church, and I promise you, you won't feel like it's your first time here. You're going to feel like you've been here for weeks and weeks, and you've known us for a long time. So as soon as we open up, hopefully soon, uh, come on down and uh, visit us. We would love to have you guys. Um, this subject here we're going to be talking about is life. What's our purpose in life? And that's something that I want you to ask yourself. You can pause this video or just keep listening to me, but I really want you to just ask yourself that. What's the purpose of my life? Where am I at now in my life? And where do I want to be at in my life? And um, this, the Lord put this on my heart when I was reading the book of Ecclesiastes. And uh, today I went to the gym after work and it was just confirmed that God really wanted me to speak on this subject. Um, these two guys in their mid-twenties were working out, talking, and they were talking about weightlifting and, and what one did what the other did what can i do to improve this what can i what can i eat to improve that and they just kept going into depth on on working out in their diet and then one of the guys they mentioned that um he had just gotten off work he's a construction worker and um he was just tired of his job he wanted something new he wanted something better and the other guy he mentioned to him well don't you have a business degree um, why don't you do something in that? You're almost done. And the, other, the construction work, worker mentioned that, yeah, he has done five years of college already and, and he wants to pursue that. And he just mentioned uh, about how he's treated at work as a construction worker and so forth. And um, he said, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I seem, it seems like I've wasted my life away uh, being in construction. And I want something new. I want something better. I feel like this is not my purpose in life. So I was like, wow, you know, that's that's exactly what my subject was. And it was just confirmed there. Um, there's, a, there's a story that I want to read to you. A very, very short story. It's just about an athlete and uh, what the reporters had asked him. This athlete who had reached the pinnacle of his sport, meaning he reached the top. He was the best of the best at his sport. And he just... There was nothing more he can do. Broke all the records. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. He's going to be remembered. No one else is going to come close to this individual. And he was once asked what he wished someone would have told him when he first started playing his sport. And his response was, I wish that someone would have told me that when you reach the top, there's nothing there. Now, that got me thinking and that, may, and that should make you think too. If you're in a job and your, per, your goal is to promote all the way to the top of the food chain, that you're, there's no other boss above you. You're your own boss and you're the boss of everybody else. What's after that? What's left? What's next in your life if you've reached your goal? And reached the top just like the athlete did. He reached the pinnacle peak of his sport that there was nothing left. And he just felt like when he reached that top, there was nothing more. 
Now, I'm not saying that it's bad to plan this, so please don't say that I meant that what I mean is that you shouldn't plan to, to uh, succeed and promote to the highest peak. No, that's not what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is that is that your full purpose, your main goal is to reach that, and once you reach that, then you're stuck up there, meaning like, well, what's next? I, I made it this far, so what's the purpose and what's next in my life? Now, as I was reading, like I said, I got this message when I was reading the book of Ecclesiastes. And uh, this book was written by Solomon, along with Solomon also wrote Proverbs, along with other authors, and Songs of Solomon. In other Bible versions, that book is also called Songs of Song. And uh, Bible scholars have mentioned that, um, and I'm about to read that right now, that, that during his younger years, Proverbs, that during his younger years, Songs of Solomon, meaning Songs of Songs, that book, he wrote that. In his middle-aged years, he wrote Proverbs. And at the end of his life, he wrote Ecclesiastes. The purpose behind Ecclesiastes is right here in the study Bible. Um, according to the Jewish tradition, Solomon wrote Songs of Songs during his younger years, Proverbs in his middle years, and Ecclesiastes during the last years of his life. The accumulated effect of Solomon's spiritual decline, idolatry, and life of self-indulgence left him at the end delusioned with pleasure and materialism as a way to happiness. So meaning Son of Solomon had, I mean Solomon had everything. It's mentioned in the book that he had whatever he desired he could have. Whether it be entertainment, food, he had wisdom also. And that was his way to happiness, was just material things. Ecclesiastes records his cynical reflections about the futility and em emptiness of seeking happiness in life apart from God. So seeking, he seeked life apart from God, and that's where it left him emptiness. His purpose was not through God at this time, at the end of his, end of his years. He seeked material things which left him empty. And his and he had experienced wealth, power, honor, fame, and sensual pleasure. All in great abundance, yet they added up in the end to emptiness and disillusionment. Meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. His primary purpose in writing Ecclesiastes may have been to share his regrets and his first-hand testimony with others before he died especially with young people, so that they would not make the same mistakes he had. He established forever the utter futility of basing one's value in life on earthly possessions and personal ambition. So we're going to go into the Word of God now, and we're going to start with Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. And this is what it says. You've heard it already. Meaningless, meaningless says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Meaningly, meaningless has been mentioned here one, two, three, four, four times in, in which all of them ended in an exclamation mark. The verse here states the theme of Ecclesiastes. All our activities on earth are meaningless and purposeless when carried out apart from God's will. Now, we hear a lot of people mention that I, I do believe in God. I do pray to God. I do have a relationship with God. That my life is, per, is good right now because how dare you tell me that I don't have a relationship with God when I do. Now, a way to show that somebody has a relationship with God is just watch the way they, they live, they act. You know, uh, spouses. Uh, if you really want to know how, how one's husband or wife really is and acts, just ask their spouse. That will, they will tell you everything. You know? and, um, when, and it says right here, when carried out apart from God's will, when, when your life is carried out apart from God's will, it's meaningless. And I'll say that again, and I completely agree with that. When your life, your decisions, your choices are out of God's will, your life is meaningless. And we're going to get more in depth with that. So don't turn off 
this channel just yet. S stay with it, listen to me to the end, and then you could be the judge after that. We're gonna go now to uh, same, same book, Ecclesiastes chapter one, verses 12 through 18. And it starts off with wisdom is meaningless. We'll go to verse 12. I, the teacher, this is Solomon, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on, may, on men. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless. There's that word again. A chasing after the wind. What is twisted cannot be straightened. What is lacking cannot be counted. I thought to myself, look, I have grown and increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly. But I learned that this is too, is a chasing after the wind. For with much wisdom comes much sorrow. The more knowledge, the more grief. So you see here, he talks about his wisdom, but then in the end, towards the end, he talks about wisdom. His wisdom was meaningless. Humans cannot find purpose in life in and by themselves, nor can people use their own human achievements to set right all that appears wrong in the world. It goes back to, again, making decisions, choices, your purpose in life. Whatever, your pur whatever you think your purpose is in life and you go after it, if it's apart from God's will, it's meaningless. Yes, and again, you may be happy at this point on this earth and feel like what you are doing is in God's will. But again, and I'm going to say it over and over again, apart from God's will, your life is meaningless. I'm going to go to the second part. The solution, meaning the solution to where people use their own, own human achievements to set right all, their, um, all that appears in the world, this is the solution. The solution calls for something higher than human wisdom, philosophy, or ideas. That wisdom is from heaven, meaning God. Every decision that you make in your life, where you try to find purpose in your life, take it to God. Pray about it before you make, that, make a decision. Talk to God. God will guide you. Find yourself a mature Christian, a pastor, a teacher from a Bible study that is well respected. Seek their counseling. Now the question is, and we've heard it from other people. I don't know if you've heard it. I've heard it. But they always said, what is the purpose in my life? There are some people out there that just completely give up and just think there's no purpose in my life. And they go down wrong paths, just living life thinking that it's my life, there's nothing more I can do, I give up, there's no purpose. What's the purpose? They ask over and over again, what's the purpose of my life? People that go through hard times and things that they wish they can forget, they go back to that and say, well, what's the purpose of my life if just everything is going bad? Every decision goes downhill. People that I meet let me down. What's the purpose? Sometimes we get too busy with all these plans, meaning our plans that we, we uh, make when we're younger. You know, my, uh, my daughter's, uh, my oldest daughter, she's already making her, her plans in life. And she tells me that... Uh, when she grows up, she's going to be a vet or she's going to be a horse trainer. So, you know, there she feels like that's her purpose in life is to to help animals. My youngest daughter, on the other hand, she thinks she tells me that I'm going to live with you forever, Papa, forever and ever and ever. I'm going to stay with you, and live with you, which is perfectly fine with me, <laughs> you know, but, you know, as a kid, you start hearing them say, I want to be this when I grow up. I want to do this with my life. You know, when I was a kid, along with my cousins, which we were very competitive in sports, basketball, football, baseball, kickball, dodgeball, anything that dealt with 
uh, with the sport, we were very, very competitive in it. Sore losers, I, I can add. I was a sore loser. Um, I remember uh, playing, uh, playing baseball or football. If we lost the game, my family knew not to talk to me for a while because I was angry. And, uh, but anyways, what, uh, what, what I was going to, um, to get at is my plan for my life was to be in the NFL or the MLB, a professional baseball player, or, you know, my Tata, uh, loved boxing, uh, bought us boxing gloves and we used to box at, uh, at his house. Uh, our parents, they didn't know about it, but we did. And, uh, along with my cousins, our purpose in life was to be a professional athlete. Well, that didn't happen for none of us, but we felt that that was our purpose. But sometimes we get so busy with all these plans that we forget the purpose behind them. And that's going along with the athlete that I just mentioned. He reached the top of his sport, and when he got to the top, and they asked him what he wished that somebody would have told him before he got there, is that there's nothing at the top if it's just your pleasure and your will that what you want again i'm not saying to not make plans for the future for your purpose in life i'm not saying to reach if you want to promote if you want to be the boss of the boss do it i'm not telling you not to but there has to be a purpose there you have to bring god into your plans your purpose in life and follow his will because again, what Solomon said here, it will stick with me, is that apart from God's will, your life is meaningless. And again, we're going to get into why I keep repeating that later on at the conclusion of my message. If, when we get too busy with our plans and not realize that God has a greater purpose in our life, so we forget uh, the purpose behind it and not realize that God has a greater purpose for our lives. You know, I'm guilty of this. Um, there's been things that I prayed for in my life that I wanted, prayed over and over for. And once I got that position or what I was praying for, I completely forgot that God put me in that position, that I made it all about myself, that I went apart from God's will. And let me tell you this, if you go apart from God's will, away from God's will, after he put you there, he'll definitely remind you that he is in charge, that he put you there. God will always get the glory and the purpose of your life, the decisions that you make in, that's um, according to his will. And Jeremiah 29, 11 is a very, very familiar uh, scripture that just explains that God wants you to have a great life. God has a perfect plan for your life, perfect plan and perfect purpose for your life. If you continue to seek him, if you continue to uh, go on his will and don't get me wrong, we are not perfect. None of us are. I understand that we all step away from God's will at a point at some point of our life. But the goal is, is that God never leaves us where we left him he stays right there where he left off in his plan for us and waits for us to come back to him so just because you went away from his will doesn't mean that your your life is meaningless or you have no purpose god is waiting for you right there where you started and your life meant something and he's waiting for you to come back and he'll guide you from right there and keep going so jeremiah 29 11 and this is what it says. For I know the plans, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. His plans are to prosper you, prosper you, not harm you. Doesn't mean that you're going to go through some bumps and bruises, but God will get you out of that. It's like uh, what Pastor James Turner said. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. So God is going to be with you every step of the way. You and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Wow. Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9. Now this scripture, this verse right here, it goes to what I said before. Is that when we get to a point of our life 
we forget about God because God got us to where we want it to be and we don't need God anymore. We forget. And we start making plans that are going to help us, me, leave God out of it. What's going to please me? What are my thoughts and purpose for my life instead of what God has and purpose for our life? There's, there's a big difference there. So in verse 8, it says, and God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. God has bigger plans for you, a different way for you, and much bigger thoughts than you. Verse 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. You know, um, talking about getting to a position where we have been asking God to put us a job, um, promotions, wherever it may be that God put you and you forget about who put you in that place. This is a perfect example of what happened in Exodus chapter 9, verse 16. This is during the plagues of Egypt when Moses came, uh, was sent by God, and Moses would, would ask Pharaoh, let God's people go. It's time to let them go. And uh, Pharaoh kept ignoring everything that he was on top. He was king of all kings. Pharaoh, he was the leader of all Egypt. That Who is Moses to tell him what to do, when to do it, how to do it? So in Exodus chapter 9, verse 16, and this is what it says. But I have raised you up for this very purpose that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Now, Pharaoh thought he was in control. Pharaoh thought that he had it all. There was nobody higher than him that could tell him what to do. But God put him in that spot being the Egyptian leader. Now, listen to this. God has a purpose for everyone. Now, Pharaoh, he wasn't a follower of Christ. He wasn't part of God's people. God's people were there in slavery where Moses uh, went to get them out. Now, <clears throat> God has a purpose for everyone, even those who resist him. Wow, that, that's, that's love. I'll read that again. God has a purpose for everyone, even those who who resist him. People who don't have a relationship with Christ, don't come to church, don't read the Bible, don't pray, don't proclaim God as Lord of their life, don't trust God. God is still in control. Until the day that we leave this earth, whether it be old age, or whether it be the coming of Christ, God is still in control. Even those who resist him. God has a purpose for their life. Ultimately, God will always get the glory, no matter the person. Now, we could say that for everything, you know, we don't give God enough glory for what he's done in our life. We don't give God enough praise for everything that he's given us and done for us in our life. God, the purpose of our life we forget to give God all the glory. And why is that? Because he is the giver of purpose whether you he is the giver of purpose whether you live for him or not. God is the giver. He is the giver of purpose whether you live for him or not. So whoever the person is, whether it's a Christian or non-Christian, wherever you're in, you're at in life, God put you there. God gave you a purpose for wherever he has you. And I'll be the one to admit that sometimes I forget that. Where God deserves all the glory, we forget to give him the glory and purpose. God doesn't want us to enjoy life. Well, wait a minute. God doesn't want us to enjoy life? Because I hear that too. You know, while th you Christians have so many rules that I can't enjoy my life. There's so many rules in the word of God that, you, that I feel like I'm a robot. No, that's not the case. You know, this book here is a great, great study manual for your life. 
how to live. You have a question on your life, you have a struggle, this is the book to go to. But we seem to forget if we don't like something that we read and it pokes us the wrong way, like money, for instance, we don't want to read it. We feel like, oh, no, God is trying to control me there on money. I will skip that part and go to the part where where I love what I love to read. All things are possible with Christ. Oh, there we go. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to read right there. That's my purpose in life, to read that because all things are possible. So I can do whatever I want to do because it's all possible. So they go and they say, God doesn't want me to enjoy my life. Well, no, not necessarily. We're going to go to John, the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. And this is what it says here. Very, very familiar scriptures. Um, my pastor, I used this scripture in the beginning of my, um, my walk with Christ again. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And this is Jesus speaking. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Have life and have it to the full. God, doesn't want, God is not saying, I don't want you to enjoy your life. I want you to enjoy your life. I want you to live happy. I want you to have purpose through me in your life. Now, this verse provides a penetrating glimpse into a spiritual dynamic at work behind the scenes of human activity. This is the behind the scenes of human activity in our world. In this scripture here, Satan is the thief that comes to still kill and destroy our lives. Our lives, our health, families, purpose in life, and everything that is good. Did you, did you hear that? That saying here is the thief that God is talking about, Jesus. Jesus said this scripture, this verse. And it says right there that the, the saying's primary mission is to steal and to kill and destroy people's life, health, families, purpose in life and everything that is good. But Jesus has come to, encounter, to counter and destroy Satan's sinister work. Now, where did he do that at? By the power of the cross and by giving life that is redemptive and full to those who believe and receive him. Wow. So Satan comes to destroy your purpose in life. He, wants to, he never wants to let you go. If, you, if he has you thinking about the material things of this world, and forgetting about God and what God has planned for you in this world, he's winning. But let me tell you this, the battle is not won. It's only begun. And that's where Christ comes in. And through him, you will have purpose in your life. Through him. The, um, again, with my acronyms, I love giving acronyms here. Uh, you'll hear it in my messages. And this is mine for the word life l is for life i is for isn't f is for is for is for 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 f o r and e is forever life isn't forever on this earth life isn't forever on this earth so that's where that's where i'm going to i'm going to be closing pretty soon but that's where I want to come when I told you don't turn this, this video off just yet until you reach the end. When I said, when Solomon said that life apart from God's will is meaningless. Oh, you might be thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, my life is not meaningless. Maybe you don't believe in God and you feel like your life is, has a meaning to it. Yeah, but you're not going to get very far. This life on this earth will end death. Death is very unexpected. You don't know when the time you're going to go. God wants you to have a great life. Live it to the full, just like we read here in John chapter 10, verse 10. God wants you to live it in full, but with Him as your personal Savior, with Him by your side, for you to feel like you have a purpose in life. Now, after death... What do you think about what happens after death? After this life is over, then that's what I took it as with this athlete. I reached the top, the top. What's next for me? Us as Christians, we're here temporarily in this life. 
our purpose in our lives through Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, our life is not going to end. We're going to have everlasting life in heaven where there's no tears, no sickness. There's no negative thing at all in heaven. It's all down here you have a purpose, and that's through Jesus Christ. Now I want you to think about this. What do you think happens after death? What do you think happens after this? And if you haven't seen the movie God's Not Dead, you need to watch it because that's where I got this from. Now what do you think happens when you die, when you leave this earth? Some people say that that's it. My purpose on this earth is to live my life, make as much money as I want to, be the top of the top of my um, company, and that's it. I want to enjoy my life down here. I want to live my life, and that's it. That's my purpose. And when I die, that's it. There, there's nothing after death. That's the end of my lifespan. Okay. Well, if that's your belief, then I have nothing to worry about. What I believed in, it meant nothing. If I die believing and being saved and having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and I die and what you think is right, then, then there's nothing for me to worry about. I'm, I'm safe still. There's some people that say that we come back as an animal or, or, or something. Well, if that's the case and I had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ still on this earth, and I trusted him with my life, and I trusted him with the purpose of my life, well, I guess I'll come back as a cheetah. I have nothing to worry about. Now, us, as Christians, there's only two places that you can go after you die, and that's either heaven or hell. You either worship Jesus singing in a beautiful perfect place and that's your purpose to live to suffer and to die and then go up to heaven to live my life as a purpose to serving christ which that's where i'll suffer and also everybody suffers in this world in this life on this earth we all suffer we all struggle so we live our life some of us without no purpose, some of us having a purpose, serving Christ, knowing there's something out there, something else, something else after death, meaning heaven, and then we die. Or you go to hell with Satan himself. Now, if I'm right about that, then if you're not saved, you have a lot to worry about. I want you to think about that. If we die and there's nothing left, I have nothing to worry about. If we die and there is a heaven and a hell, then if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, your purpose in this life is meaningless and you have a lot to worry about. I want to thank you guys for joining me here at Douglas First Assembly of God. And come visit us. Come visit us. Um, we sanitize this place a lot. Our seats are very separated, big gap. We spray nonstop here. It's a safe place. What's safer than in the house of God? Let's close. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to be together, even though it's through YouTube. I just want to thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity another night to just study your word, get more in depth in your word, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray that who's ever watching this video, that they turn it off thinking, being a different person, wanting to be a, per a different person, Lord. If they haven't accepted you into their life, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that they do. We're not promised tomorrow, Father. But Lord, when we have a purpose in our life that's through you, trusting you, 
with our life? Father, there's no other greater protection than with you, God. Lord, I just want to just give you all the honor and glory tonight, Father God. And Father, I just pray that we all just realize that we have a purpose in this life. That, Father, there's more to this life than just the material things. That, Father, you give us purpose. You give us life. Every day we wake up in the morning, Lord, you have a purpose and plan for our day, Father. And Lord, if there is somebody out there <clears throat> that feels like they don't have a purpose, Lord, I just want to pray that they find you, Lord. They give you their heart. And Lord, that they truly find purpose of their life through you. Lord, we thank you. We love you. And we give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you again for joining me tonight. And we'll see you again. God bless.